Welcome to the Audio Dabble YouTube channel. My name is Mitch and today I will be your guide. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Picasso guitar bow. Recently picked this up and I'm going to give you my thoughts and a initial review and show you what it can do to your acoustic guitar. So let's get started. Now if you came here to see an unboxing, I am not your guy. My ADHD and just compulsiveness always gets the best of me when I get a new piece of equipment, but here we go. Here's a box. It was in a box. But I will say that it comes, obviously it comes with a Picasso bow in the box. It comes with a little uh, thing of rosin that you need to rosin up your bow and play your uh, I guess guitar hard. Comes with a nice little uh, carrying case that actually fits the bow, you know, and kind of fits your rosin in. Comes with a little quick start guide to show you all about it. Nicely packaged and it comes in a with a little sticker. So what is this little intriguing uh, piece of gear that I have in my hand? Well, as you saw at the beginning of the video, it's for bowing a guitar. <laughs> It's a micro bow that you can stick inside the sound hole, designed obviously for acoustic guitars, not necessarily for electrics because electrics don't have a sound hole and it would be awkward trying to slide it in between the frets and all that stuff. So mainly for acoustics, it's really nice. I've had a lot of fun with it. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this from all the money. Actually, I saw an ad. I was scrolling through, I saw it, it was pretty cool. I uh, showed my wife and she was like, dude, order it. I was like, it's 80 bucks. And she's like, so? You need, that would be really cool to have. Especially since we were fixing to go to the beach and I wouldn't have all my equipment. And so it was, it was fun playing with around, uh, sitting out by the pool with the condo. So that was, that was nice. <laughs> So I've had it about two weeks and I've never played anything with a bow like a violin or a cello. I've always wanted to, but I never have. And so it's definitely taking some use, getting used to. It definitely sounded like garbage whenever I first started playing it. It was, but you've got to like figure out the right movement, the right amount of pressure so that you can get sound and it don't sound all screechy. And even still, sometimes it's still, if you don't do it just right, it can get all kind of screechy sounding. If you don't apply the right pressure, you gotta, it's, it's a, I feel like it's a combination of pressure and motion that you've gotta get it just, you gotta find that sweet spot. And sometimes it works on the bigger strings, I feel like, better. Oops. I'm still trying to get the hang of the right amount of rosin and things like that. So misconceptions from like the tutorial or the showcasing videos is like, oh, you pick it up and you just play it. No, it's there's it's a process and it is definitely a learning curve. But I will say that the more and more I play it, the better it sounds. And like with most anything, slap a whole bunch of reverb on it and Sounds amazing.
Also, I would recommend, I think they recommend too, getting some string cleaner. You can get some of the finger ease and wipe it down. It does come with a uh, little cloth that I, it comes with a black one, it's in my guitar case. This cloth actually came with my fast fret. There it goes. It comes with a nice little Picasso bow. There it is. A little black cloth to wipe your strings down because definitely you want to clean them because it will get a little rosiny, I guess. But this works really good. Just a stick. You just rub it on your frets and your strings and make sure you wipe them down after, probably after each use. I've never really been a huge fan of this because I always, I just always buy the coated strings that last forever. But now that I'm playing with this, I'll probably definitely keep just regular strings on my guitar because it's so much fun. It adds, allows me to add a little more dynamics to some of the songs and some of the things that I play at church. Picasso Bo has some videos and stuff, but I just want to kind of give you my understanding of how to use it. Take your rosin. It'll come with a little piece of sandpaper and you'll, you'll kind of rub it down. But then anytime you want to play it, you're going to take your bow and kind of rub it up and down to get some of that rosin on there pretty good and then you just take said guitar and you stick it in between the strings and see there's still still some work I gotta do So that's how you use it basically, just rub it down and bow your strings. That's sort of what she said. <laughs> the learning curve is, if you're not familiar with bowed instruments, never played any, you know, it could be a learning curve like me because I've had it for two weeks. I'm still, still learning, but you know, it's a new way to, depending on how you play it, I'm sure it's physics because it is just a, a tiny bow so you can't. You don't have the range of motion, so you can't sustain super long notes unless you hook it up to an effects pedal and you apply some reverb, and then you can get some nice swells with it. But just the loudness on the beach, it was, you know, depending on where you're at, it could be a little quiet on the quiet side unless you really, like, get into it. But then it's, the harder you get into it, it's definitely going to take a lot of practice to be able to play it loudly and quickly and stuff like that um, only time will tell on that but so far just in the two weeks I've had it, it's definitely worth the uh, the price that they're asking for it so yeah I've enjoyed the dynamics that it can add to my guitar playing when certain songs at church um, but what do you guys think does anybody have the Picasso bow that they use do they use it on a regular basis do you think it's a gimmick is it just kind of, eh, it's kind of useful, but it's kind of a gimmick. Um, I think it's very useful, especially with a lot of practice. It can definitely be something that, you know, you can play a few strings and, you know, maybe loop some chords and then just um, trying to add some extra dynamics to a live looping set because you don't have to grab here or there or whatever. You can just grab this. You can have it laid out on the table, have it ready, just swipe a few notes, add some extra little dynamics to a looping set which I'm eventually hopefully going to get more into live looping and so yeah just in the comments below let me know if you if you have one and you know your thoughts about it and everything so if you like this kind of content and other music related content and you're not a subscriber make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video likes and dislikes help you know whether you like the video or dislike the video um you know all kind of interactions help with the video itself and if you'd like to support in other ways i have links in the description as always guys thank you for watching and i will see you in the